Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork New Game video. Today's video is taking two defense breakers and how this role is pretty much the most important role defines most of the team so let's go ahead and talk about it. Go to the Google spreadsheets as we always do and this is going to show you what are the viable defense breakers right. So you can see it right here the top three Makoto, Mitsuki, June these are like the best ones. Don't look at Rei. Rei is probably more like when she gets six star and her unique equipment. Christina is coming down the road and then we have Shinobu as well so these four are the physical defense breakers and then over here you have the magic defense breakers which is pretty much akari and keru these are like the only two ones you can technically use someone like anna she dies too fast usually but she's really great for dps if you can keep her alive you know prevent her from actually dying and note that defense breakers are the key units to any team whether it's mostly for like boss content so what i mean by that if we go to the little lyrical event and let's go ahead and test out, you know, the defense breaking team, one of like the best ones. You will note that these are the teams that pretty much define you in clan battle. And that sheet showed was pretty much from clan battle, right? So we have June, Makoto, and Mitsuki here. So the reason why it's always important to have at least two defense breakers is because they will enable more damage. So let's see how fast we do it with three defense breakers, right? If you remove someone like June, your damage might stall out just a little bit bit just because you have two defense breakers instead of like the three overall what the purpose of having a defense breaker is is so you can have more damage capabilities right so long as the boss has that, that blue shield on them then they're, you're pretty much doing the maximum amount of damage you can see there we completed the boss within like what 22 seconds something like that right and that's all because of you know like attack buffs from mimi but most of all that defense break is always up and the boss pretty much can't keep up with all of the hits going on but let's go ahead and see what happens and let's play someone like Miyako right in case you don't want to use like another defense breaker and usually though when you run Makoto and Mitsuki you don't run like a tank in general you can run someone like Akari to do like healing in the back line just so you can get a little bit more damage off but you can see here we're definitely completing the boss just as fast all right, we already passed technically a 22 second mark, but you can see here we finished at one minute and five seconds. But overall, we always had the defense break debuff constantly on. And the reason why it's so important to just have that is so you can defeat the bosses as fast as possible and everyone is able to do the maximum amount of damage. Now, technically, the only reason why you wouldn't run someone like this and you would run someone like Akari is just so that you can get even more damage out of your team. By that, I mean running like a tankless run, which is what most people do in clan battle, is just so that you can increase your damage even further having someone like Akari whose UB can actually heal folks after she casts it right she has to cast her UB before she can do any heals but it's still fairly effective from here it doesn't really matter because you know the boss is like too low in HP but it's one of those strategies that you can also implement. Note that her magic defense debuff won't help the overall team, but it's just something to look into in case folks are curious. And of course, having like, you know, an attack buffer, we can like talk about that. But like the big ones within the game are like Mimi and Kokoro. Let's go ahead and go into the dungeon. And I pretty much saved the boss. And this is like one of the teams that I use in order to one shot him in a round. So not this one in particular. We're gonna be in June, Makoto, and Kauri. Yui in the back. You don't really need Yui, but it's just for some insurance so that the run pretty much stabilizes. You can bring someone like Chika because Chika can, you know, bring the attack buffs. Overall, this one definitely works as well. So Yui heal, absolutely useless right there. The most important part is that you can see that the boss is both poisoned and there's always a defense break on him. Now, note here, as soon as this pretty much gets casted, Look at that damage, 32,000. Now, if you don't have like those defense breaks, you can definitely miss out on like lots of damage for the most part. That's like the only unfortunate thing, like your damage can literally be cut in half. So for example, we're gonna go ahead and retreat and we're not gonna bring someone like June and Makoto around. We're gonna bring someone else, right? All right, so let's go ahead and replace June and Makoto with someone like Miyak, who does damage, Shuri, right? So we have more damage dealers here instead of defense breaks, and you will see how it pretty much affects the team, right? Because the most important part is having like that defense break constantly up. With Mitsuki, while she is technically a good replacement for Makoto, because you know she has like this little defense break circle 
though, she doesn't always have a defense break up. Well, the reason why Makoto is so good is because she has one of the highest uptimes when it comes to defense breaks. And you can see there, like, Kyrie did 32,000 damage because she was able to cast her UB during the defense break, right? So sometimes it's like those small things that'll make the largest difference. Right there, you know, Mitsuki only dealt 4K, and then Shori here only, she dealt 17,000 thanks to the defense breaks. But you can tell like the team isn't doing as much damage where, you know, with Makoto, we were doing like pretty much 40,000 damage right out the gate. So if you're wondering like what I'm talking about, let's just replace like Shori for the sake of it. So you can see like the differences, right? And it's not because Shory's like a weaker character. It has nothing to do with that. It's just because the more defense breaks, the defense breaks that you can pretty much stack because defense breaks do stack on bosses, especially in clan battle, where you can take advantage of more defense breaks, where it's even more important in some case, then that's what you pretty much want to do, right? So you can see here, we're pretty much going through the motions and hopefully we can get Makoto's UB. And Makoto's UB, it's probably not that powerful like attack wise but that defense break is like everything 32,000 because Mitsuki's defense break is up and then Makoto deals 20,000 versus Shory's 16,000 and it just has to do with the fact that there are pretty much more debuffs going on you can see there Mitsuki dealt 9,000 versus like the 4,000 earlier and this is why Makoto is such an important character it has nothing to do with the fact that you know she can pretty much deal high damage it has ever Everything to do with the fact of that defense debuffs helping other characters not just herself right because Mitsuki got a damage boost everyone got an overall damage boost not just like one character and this is why defense breaks they are pretty much going to make or break your team in the future because the more that you have within clan battle or the more like rooms for experimentation that you have the better right because it allows for different team cops like for example in the future, you don't have to run someone like just Makoto. You can run someone like Mumi, or you can run someone like Christina or Aori, the transfer student. That's a very popular one, right? Or you could even run technically the free swimsuit Kokoro. Let's go ahead and run some arena as we always do. Go ahead and fight this one because this seems very doable. Low stars and everything. This is the classic team by Zero Yu Wei. He gets all the credit for pretty much creating this team because this is one of the best teams that I pretty much ran. Now, one of the things that I like to talk about is like Makoto with her defense breaks. It helps pretty much debuff like Miyako and helps Kaori actually deal more damage than she's supposed to. And without like someone like Makoto on the actual team, it's actually not as effective. What's interesting enough though is sometimes like, you know, timing like that, it's not really that they missed a lot. It's because she turned into the ghost and you know, that's pretty much unlucky. That could cost us the fight, just that moment alone. Because usually you want Miyako to go down and then Kaori will cast her UBs. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens here. We have 40 seconds left on the clock, pretty much, and we got some misses there. Miyako pretty much turning into 3-star and then ranking herself up has higher magic attack than Kokoro for some reason, which is pretty interesting. I like that quite a bit because it helps like the overall team like survive much longer. Kokoro being alive much longer in the back helps with, you know, you know, the actual like UBs being cast and all the buffs and stuff because you want, you know, someone like Miyako to be attacked, which is really cool how ranks like affect like the small details like that in PvP. But we're probably not going to win. We got properly stalled in this one. And it has everything to do with the fact that we attacked Miyako when we weren't supposed to when she was in her ghost form, but you can't really control like arena that much because everything's on auto. Totally fine here. I'm glad like this team pretty much exists. But it's interesting though that we, you know, this is small things like with timing can definitely affect how things go. Let's do some Princess Arena as we always do. Let's see what we have going on here. That looks sort of doable for the team and this one looks very doable. Looks very, very doable. All right, let's go ahead and get this started and see what happens. I always like the, the little loading screens with like the little sprites and stuff. And when it comes to things like pre-con and stuff, I actually got an email from Crunchyroll. They wanted like my player ID for something. So it's really cool that they're doing their hardest for investigations and all that. In case you're wondering how things are going, you know, if you send an email to Crunchyroll support, 
they'll definitely contact you and they're very serious about the way they handle things regarding the game in case y'all are curious about other information so if you're ever curious like hey you know can we speed up banners and all that stuff send an email to the country world support team i'm pretty sure they will respond they'll do something because they are definitely looking at the stuff that we are putting out they are aware of the community and our gripes and everything so if you contact them they will have some sort of response well, it might not be the one that you want to hear, but it's definitely a response nonetheless. All right, let's see how this is going. Mimi is doing pretty decent damage right here. Hopefully, I can get her to four star before like the end of the event. Ideally, five star, but that's definitely wishful thinking. I'll probably see Mimi like five star, like probably within like what, like two months from now, something like that. It takes forever to like farm all those shards and whatnot. All right, we're 15 seconds here. Miyako doing some very stealthy tanking right here. There's no way we're going to be able to take this down. The timing for this is just really impeccable for her because when she turns into the ghost, pretty much everything aligns perfectly well. And yeah, we got timed out. Pretty much see if we can beat the other teams, but it's definitely going to be a close line. And note here, most of like my teams, while Akari is like here for mostly magic defense breaks. So that's Akari's actual purpose is her magic defense breaks when you're fighting someone like Miyako in the beginning because she pretty much breaks Miyako because Miyako already has low magic defense. And with her pretty much appearing, doing some magic attacks, magic defense breaks, it helps like the overall team and deal with like Miyako issues and all that stuff. And she also works with any team, technically speaking, because no matter like who it is who exists on the field, if she can lower, you know, someone's magic defense, it's going to be a really cool thing to pretty much have someone like that. That's why Summer Care is going to be important in the future. Because she's someone like Makoto who has like more magic defense breaks. But if you don't care about that, Summer Karu is also like top tier waifu. Let's see how this goes. We're doing pretty well. June goes down. Get these attacks in. We should be pretty much fine. Very nice. Arisa with her UB going off really quick. Yori with her UB. Do the punchies. Alright, very, very nice. Alright, so we got the wins right here. You love to see it. I like to see it personally. It was definitely a close fight in the beginning. I didn't think we were going to pull out the win, but we managed to do so. But anyways, when it comes to like these defense breaks and all the characters and stuff, I'll have links to this in the description. This is overall for clan battle, but just note that defense breaks teams can be applied to PvP, boss battles, any situation where you are dealing high amounts of damage you always want a defense breaker. But anyways, that is it for today's video. If you made it this far, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we hit 17,500 subs, we'll be doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.